Well, my name is Oliver Henry of Jemison and Smith. To celebrate 70 years of Jemison and Smith, and uh, we're virtual Wool Week. We are following in the footsteps of the founder of Jemison Smith, the late John Smith. He was born here in Vister, Sandwich, in 1889. He was one of a family of five children, three sisters and two brothers. His dad was a James Smith for Hooland and Sandwich, and his mom was Belle Jimison of Vister and Sandwick, hence the name Jimison and Smith. So Vister, Crofthus that we're inches now, is typical of the Crofts in, in Shetland. The land was very, very poor and uh, you can see around us here it was all sort of heathery um, marshy ground, so this is where uh, the family of seven had uh, existed. On uh, weekends, Shippy, in order to help the family when he was a bairn, he would go and work in the Sandwick Bakery. His pay for that was a loaf of bread, which no doubt would have come in very handy with a lot of moose to feed. So in 1923, uh, our old boss, John Shippy Smith, married a school teacher that teached in Sandwick, and her name was Florence Keith, and she came from Latherne and Caithness. In 1923, so uh, they had uh, two bairns, um, one in 1924 and one in 1925 and obviously it's a very small croft at Vister so they took the, what would have been a huge step to acquire Barry Farham Scalawa. And Barry Farham Scalawa in the late 1920s and uh, 1930 um, he became not only a farmer, but he became a dealer merchant. And he would buy all sorts of, of, of farm livestock. And he was renowned for his, um, his kindness to people and for being able to pay people. And so he had a lot of customers and he made a lot of business contacts uh, through the UK. So, not only did he, he deal with livestock, uh, he dealt with wool. In the winter months, he would deal with the wool club. And uh, that took place at Berry Farm, and that was way about 1930. We'd onset at the second war in 1939, there was a uh, military base, presumably army base, that was set up uh, right here on Barry Farm. You can still see the states of that. And one of the things he did, he would uh, get the swell uh, for, the, for the camp and he would feed that to pigs up in the piggery here at Barry and he would sell that pigs onto the camp. So quite, quite a uh, a go ahead businessman. He also had a stock that he would buy throughout Shetland, so he needed land. And then uh, uh, once 
he uh, acquired Yui Isle, that was in the 40s, and ended up, uh, they bought that in the first of the 60s. He also um, rented land in uh, Bressa, and they had bits and pieces through at Sherland because Dillon was a big thing, the route was sand water, uh, Chimaberry would go to the route and he would uh, herd the sheep or whatever, uh, even Kai, he would bring that back to Berry Farm. A big step, another big step was uh, he acquired Pitmeden Farm which is a dice and this is a fairly big farm and the idea for that was uh, not a lot of land in Shetland that could should, could keep our livestock. He would ship it off uh, down to Patmin and wait on the market. The marketplace um, was no distance for dice uh, Aberdeen and Northern Marts. So quite a go-ahead businessman in a lot of ways. Um, the estate was quite a big estate and uh, it made sense what he was doing there. So here we are <clears throat> at Barry Farm and I'm actually standing in what was the loft at the wool store that Shippy used to buy the wool in uh, for about 1930. So there's, before the skylight here, you can see like a table and I can imagine this is possibly why they would have a wool. They had a teasing machine, which I think would have been done there. But you can see at the end here, there's there's a, a doorway, and that was where you would put the bags of wool. It was not bales down the days, it was just hazy in bags. So they would obviously come up here and out the way and the two uh, farm labourers in the winter they would sort the wool that Eva would go out and buy for her dad and she would travel around Shetland with her uncle I was a Jimison man uh, for Sandwick had had a truck and so this was the very beginning of the wool broken business of uh, Jimison Smith and you can see it's still a pretty good building yet. So here we are at the uh, Barry Farm, uh, the original wool store, and you can see this door here, and this leads up into the loft, so it's quite handy to tuck in uh, bags of wool, and it was very obvious that this uh, was how they got the wool in. They would sort, go through it in the loft, and it would probably go down the other side. So this is the origins of the wool broken business, Jimison Swift.
So here we are at uh, Dairy Farm and we're in the piggery. And as I said, um, in the war years, sheepy uh, would get the swell for the camp and this is where he would uh, rear the pigs. And in Larwick he had um, half share in, in the abattoir and he owned the butcher shop here in Scalawa and he would um, sort out the, the bacon, the, the pork uh, for the camp. So this was the berry farm piggery. <clears throat> so as the business grew, um, new premises was needed and you can see behind me uh, it's the market cross in Larwick and we're standing on uh, the pier, Victoria Pier and this is where Northport will come in so uh, it was very handy indeed for shipping wool out uh, and this happened in 1952 uh, to 58 that this took place here. So here we're at the premises uh, Mount Tully Street and this is where <coughs> uh, Jimison Smith um, I suppose 1951 this is where um, he did the wool broken for this building here. Um, was very close to the harbour as I'm said but in 1958 uh, with the retire uh, the wool man that worked for Shippy um, the business moved out to the North Road in Larwick. So here we are on the final um, footstep of John Shippy Smith. Um, we're in the North Road in Larwick um, and the building behind this Shippy acquired in 1962. Initially um, he had it as a wool broken business and it has developed into uh, supply and textile goods worldwide. Sheepy has been a very uh, interesting journey. We've uh, followed in his footsteps from a very small croft in Sandwick, a marshy field, and he's achieved a lot in that time. And we're all very proud to have been part of uh, Sheepy and his family business.